Is she really going out with him? talk about punk rock and the new wave movement of the mid-1970s, especially as it affected me in London and how I got involved and how exciting and what the problems were, especially for me. Now, without any further ado, here's some non-punky music. Well, back in the mid 70s, I was a trainee manager in a pub, Southall Greenford on the Borders. And it was a big pub and it had two big bars at the front and it had a nightclub come discotheque, as they were called then, at the back, which is really a late night drinking place, which used to have lots of tr trouble. And I eventually got shot there. But let's not talk about that today. We're talking about... Ah! For some reason I decided to go and learn how to run pubs and bars as, a, as an idea for getting my own pub or bar and then starting from there. So it didn't turn out like that. I eventually ended up in Ely in Cambridgeshire where I was working in a pub up there and putting on music at various places. And suddenly this thing happened. The, the music industry at the time had been stagnating. It was like bands like Genesis and the big pomp rock bands were really doing things and they were putting out concept albums, triple albums and things, and it was getting very boring. Me and a lot more people was hoping there's gonna be something else because we were thinking back to the early days of rock and roll. We were hoping to something else and then gradually, there was, there were things like that happening. There was people, there were bands already, which were like, I suppose you'd call them new wave or punk without being actually given that tag, such as Dr. Feelgood, which I've mentioned in my previous video, and there's a link up there somewhere, and Eddie and the Hot Rods, another South End band. So there was this high energy stuff as well, like coming through and like, it wasn't all pomp rock and things, although these things, in those days, everything, all the types of music like folk and rock and everything else tended to exist side by side. It wasn't like a big thing. I used to go and watch folk bands. I used to go and watch, which at the time were just folk bands, like Fairport Convention and people like that. Things that I used to enjoy a wide range of music, but I craved more excitement. And then slowly this punk thing started. I suppose it was in a way manufactured. Well, the actual, the actual thing that happened was manufactured by Malcolm McLaren, who apparently had been to New York and seen like the garage band scene at CBGB's and places like that, and he, and he thought he could come back to London and recreate that here. But of course, it was already happening. Dr. Feelgood had formed in 1972. Eddie and the Hot Rods were already out there. He was looking for to do with something else, and unfortunately, the way that the media works here, everything gets put into pigeonholes. So suddenly what Malcolm McLaren, lesser extent Bernie Rhodes, who was the manager of The Clash, were doing, Malcolm McLaren with the Sex Pistols, named after his shop, don't forget, which is called Sex in the King's Road. And so they were doing slightly different things. It wasn't all Malcolm McLaren. He was harnessing what was happening in, and turning it into something else. But at the same time this was going on, Bands like London SS, I think, which never actually played live, but they were, they morphed into Generation X and The Damned and The Clash. And basically, so all these bands were going and forming and doing things. And The Damned were quite an early, separate from the Malcolm McLaren thing. They were already doing things like this. And they put out the first punk single. It was called New Rose and it was very exciting. Is she really going out with him? I guess these things have gotta be 
I've got a new rose, I've got a good Yes, I knew that I always would I can't stop to mess around I've got a brand new rose in town See the sun, see the sun it shines Don't get too close or it'll burn your eyes Don't you run away that way You can come back another day I've got a new rose, I've got a good Yes, I knew that I always would I can't stop to mess around I got a brand new rose in town So basically, how did I get involved in it all? By this time, I'd left the pub at, at South Old Stroke Greenford and I'd gone to live in Ely. Well, I basically looked for a place to put on punky gigs, new wave gigs, a punk club. And I found a place in Cambridge called The Dog and Pheasant in the New Market Road, which was like a, which had a function room at the back of the pub. And the landlord there was just interested in getting people in, to be honest. So he was quite keen on the idea. So I put on a lot of punk bands there. Plus, well, I went to Chelmsford and I, and I taught the manager of the Chancellor Hall, which held about 800 people, he put, let me put on regular punk shows there and I, I don't think I called it punk, I think I called it rock so pretty soon I was putting on very big shows at the Chancellor Hall Chelmsford I mean it's sell out shows and it was absolutely huge and at the same time as that somebody else put on a failed festival, a punk festival in Cambridge Football Club which we were doing the t-shirts for, complete for failure and I don't think anybody got paid and it was terrible but this was going on at the same time, so it was all very exciting. I go down to London a lot and go and see bands at the Marquee and places like that. And the Vortex, which is in a horrible nightclub where they, you know, it's just a horrible pickup nightclub called Crackers. But on a Monday and Tuesday, I think it was, it was like punk nights. I think Dave Woods was it, the guy. The And there was a Roxy, which I didn't really go to much. There was all these other places, and I was doing the same in Cambridge and on a bigger scale in in Chelmsford and it was really uh, exciting. I can remember walking down Wardour Street one day. In those days, sort of a village feel to so on. And I remember I went past a record shop and they had the doors open and they were playing it music. And I stopped in my tracks because I heard some music coming out of there and I had to go in and ask the guy, I said, what is that? And it was Whole Wide World by Reckless Eric. So it well said to me, It's obviously sometime in 1977, about the same time I'm doing my shows in Cambridge and Chelmsford, and um, I just thought that was the most exciting thing, because you have to bear in mind, when I said before the punk thing, at the same time as all the stiff thing and all the stiff acts were really in the punk ethos, like people like Ian Jury and the Blockheads, and Niccolo and Elvis Costello, they were doing more accomplished music. This is the thing, you see, because I think people got the wrong uh, idea. People like The Jam knew how to play. Paul Weller knew how to play, he knew how to write songs, and they were very good. They weren't in this punk ethos where you were good enough, you learnt um, one chord and you go and play. This was like a different thing. It was all lumped in with the same thing. The media went absolutely OTT and said it was all terrible and councils banned it and it was just like terrible. It was all just a big hype because it wasn't that bad. Well, obviously punk rock's nothing if not energetic, but Bernard Brook Partridge in London, having seen that film, uh, do you really think that punk rock is a, such a threat to society that you're justified in banning their concerts in London? Well, let's get it quite clear, Mr Truman, we don't. Uh, we're selective about what we permit and what we do not permit. Uh, I don't like punk, punk rock myself, and I don't feel I have to explain that or apologise for it. Uh, there are certain groups, however, not just in the punk rock field, I might add, uh, whom we do not regard favourably in London, and I'm on public record as having said that within the law, and I want to emphasise that, 
I will do everything I can to prevent certain groups, whom I do not propose to name on this programme, from ever appearing in London again. What's wrong with that? I'm, I represent the licensing authority. But presumably you take that decision on some kind of evidence, on some kind of past performance. Uh, yes, we do. Um, uh, I want to make it clear, however, that it's not a question of an MI5 blacklist. It's simply a question of uh, acquiring information, and it's the cumulative experience of our officials as well as members. Can I now turn to Edward Hansen, please, in Birmingham? Are you receiving us, Mr. Hansen? Yes. Do you yes. say you more or less see eye to eye with uh, Mr. Brook Partridge? Do you follow the same policy? Yes, we do exactly uh, along the same lines. It's not a blanket ban that you impose. Uh, well, you see, we have had punk rock in Birmingham, unfortunately, and um, we've been looking at some of it now, but they, they didn't show any of the damage that is caused by these punk rock groups, and now they're bringing out these freak punk rock groups. We've had them in Birmingham, but uh, I can assure you, and I speak as a, as a magistrate, a licensing magistrate, and uh, a magistrate on the Entertainment's uh, Licensing Committee, that we're not going to have this sort of punk rock again have in you been to a, Have you been to a punk rock? Oh, concert? yes, yes. Yes, we've had them in... I've been. I've been. I know what I'm talking about. Well, both my shows have actually got closed down. There was the one in Cambridge, a student stabbed a squaddy, and... So that was the end of that. The police closed it down. But what happened was, it wasn't really because he was a punk. He was a student at Cambridge University. And what it was, was he was being intimidated. Because in those days, you've got to remind, there was very much town and down, it was called, in Cambridge. There was an army garrison quite close. And, and they used to go into the centre of town and have fights with the students. And they never really got on, all those people. And it was just an extension of that. So it was really nothing to do with the punk thing. It was more to do with late night drinking and the local politics of the Cambridge area. So that got closed down. Then the show in Chelmsford got closed down fa famously because we, we, cause basically it was a young story, but the Damned was supposed to play at the Chelmsford City Punk Festival, which I already mentioned, and they didn't turn up because they hadn't got paid. So their agent rang me up and said, look, the damned want to play for free in terms of to make up for the fact they didn't appear. So what I was, we already had a show with 999 books, so we basically kept the ticket price at the same, which was £1.50, that was the maximum price we charged, but then the damned played as the headline act, and 999 were okay about it, and everybody was okay about it, and of course it meant that we had like an act that wouldn't have normally been playing at the Chancellor Hall, well they might have been, but they'd been charged a lot more than £1.50, which was like the lower end even then. I mean, I was charging 2 50 for the Boom Drown Rats, and no one knew who that they were then. Well, when I booked them, nobody knew who they were, but, but by the time that they played, they were number two in the charts. So, we had a huge crowd, and it was all just a question of being in the right place at the right time. Plus, I really enjoyed the music. I could see it was exciting, it was good, it was, I was being part of it, something which was always, that's always why I was doing it, music, frankly, because I wanted to be part of it, and I wanted to share it. It's like a big version of having a, um, wanting to share your playlist with, with people. So I always wanted to share my playlist, i.e. putting on live acts at a festival or an event. Ah! So, what happened was, there was a bit of a fight in the hall. The hall was packed, by the way. There were probably more people than we were supposed to have in, but don't tell anybody. Um, it was packed, there was a bit of a trouble. I was in the middle of the crowd. The, I think the damned were actually playing at this time. I was moving towards where the trouble was. There were security people going in too. And then this guy just punched me in the, in the face. And so I, was taken totally by surprise, blood everywhere, uh, no, nose broken, etc. So I'm actually holding my nose and wiping it off. It wasn't that bad, but it was. But then there was a a photographer from the local newspaper, the I think it was the, not the Essex Chronicle, it was the Chelmsford Weekly News, and he took a picture of it, which appeared on the front page of the of the next week's local paper, Punk Mayhem or something. I can't remember now. It's, long time ago and there's nothing about it online I'm pleased to say but that was that um, the obviously there was an th th there was an outcry it made it look as though the whole thing has been like you know like a total bloodbath which certainly wasn't the case and um, the local council banned me from ever putting on shows ever again <laughs> in Chelmsford so there you go 
it wasn't exactly what you read about in the books and the magazines. It was all happening in various directions. Nobody knew what was going on. There was no overall view, because don't forget, there was no internet back then. So, of course, the music journalists, most of them, I mean, a lot of the music journalists were actually, were actually caught out at first, because a lot of them dismissed all this punk and new wave stuff as being rubbish and noisy. It was like it was like they were being their their parents. It was quite humorous. So a lot of the so the whole music industry um, changed. But it wasn't long before the mainstream took hold, and that's what always happens. You get something that's like a grassroots explosion revolution, and the mainstream will always use it for their own ends. So. Pretty soon it was all, you know, it was all EMI and whatever, and it was just, it was just back to how it was, except they were selling more albums, basically, that's what happened. So anyway, that's what happened with punk, new wave, and all that stuff. It wasn't exactly as you read it in the papers or in the, or online. That's my take on the whole thing, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like it down below. Please subscribe and press the notification bell, very important. And also comment down below, please. Let me know what you think. Perhaps you were there, perhaps you weren't, perhaps you wanted it to be. Just let me know. Very kind of you to watch. Thank you for watching right to the end and um, goodbye, see you next time. Thank you again.